Hello, good day, friends. This is Chris Gallagher, The Preacher's Pen, inviting you to stick around and be part of our study as we're going to go through Philippians chapter 3. And we're on our third day of Philippians chapter 3. Day 1 was Monday, January 16th, and we read from Philippians chapter 3. Day 2, we've talked about the first several verses of Philippians chapter 3 and the encouragement that they bring to our life. And I love Philippians chapter 3. I love the entire book of Philippians, and I love the Bible. That would be all of our answers if you are watching this. But what is tremendous to me is this next passage. The passage begins in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12. And I'm not sure if it's a little bit of the athletic background of my life or it's just the simple vision for the future, but this passage to me is amazing. Because we have to remember what Paul said. Paul said that he counted the loss of all things excellent for the knowledge of Jesus. So we're going to talk about that today as we dig into this just a little bit more. But I do want to share something with you. I would ask that if you find these lessons valuable, share this with somebody else. Share this with somebody who may be having a bad day, who we can be an encouragement with, because that's what we're desiring to do is to be an encouragement to other people as they seek to create better days today for a better life tomorrow. That's what we do at the Preacher's Pen, is we seek in everything that we do to help others in their lives, to help them to create better days, to have a better life, and to get their focus on the future because that future is so important. You can find us on facebook.com forward slash preachers pen, twitter.com forward slash preachers pen, instagram.com forward slash preachers pen. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us on Rumble, but you can do all that by checking out our website at preacherspen.org. While you're there, go ahead and check out our podcast and sign up for our contact list. Our contact list is our mailing list. We send out an email a week to encourage you to continue to create those better days and live to the future. And that gets me to our topic today as we talk about Philippians chapter 3, beginning in verse 12. We know that Paul's life has been transformed by Jesus, and now he writes to the churches to encourage them to transform their lives like Jesus transformed his. Now, we all don't have the same background as Paul. We all don't have the same heritage on an earthly, fleshly confidence, maybe like Paul did, that, that we talked about yesterday But one of the things that we do have is we have hope. We have hope that we're better today than we were yesterday, that we can progress from the past to the future, and we can make that transition forward. And as Paul has been sharing about this knowledge of Jesus, one of the things he shares with them goes to verse 10 of chapter 3, where he says that I may know him, the power of his resurrections, that I may share in his sufferings and become like him in his death, if by any means I might attain the resurrection of the dead. Paul knows that great things are coming, that great things are happening. That's why he can say this. Once again, personally for me, one of my favorite chapters of not just the book of Philippians, but the entire Bible. He says in verse 12, Not that I have already obtained or I'm already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Did you notice that? Paul says, I'm moving forward not because it's mine. He says, I'm pressed forward to make it my own. But that's not really the reason. It's not a selfish reason. It's because Jesus has made me his own. Paul's continual focus in progressing forward in the rubbish that he calls, some translations use the word dung, but we don't really say dung in a church setting because we all know what that means. It just means, well, it means stuff that you put behind you that's, that's wasteful, that you don't want it anymore, that it's no longer of value to you. He did that with his earthly things, and now he's pressing on to the physical. And he says, not that I have already obtained or I'm already perfect. He says, I'm thirsting after this knowledge to know more and to know more and to know more. But he continues. He says, brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. Paul says, I'm not there yet. He says, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. The image that you get here in the original languages is one of athletics. 
See, he's not looking behind him anymore, just like the passage that we know that Jesus spoke that says, any man who puts his hand to the plow and turns back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Because we know that we need to have, as Christians, a forward focus. In our lives, we need to constantly be looking forward to the things that Jesus has given us, which is salvation. It's an opportunity, right? To the things that he's provided for us, salvation, opportunity, forgiveness of sins. The things that he's asked us to do, remember him, remember his sacrifice, remember things like the Lord's Supper, remember what Jesus did for us, remember his teachings. Paul says, I'm forgetting the things that are behind me, which was his worldly confidence, and I'm pressing forward to the things that are ahead. But he doesn't necessarily use in the English Standard Version and several others, he doesn't say just pressing forward. He says straining. That straining forward, and you go back to the original languages, what that means, it's like a runner. When that runner is running that race and he gets to the finish line, he leans into the finish line. Have you ever seen the Olympians in a 100-meter dash? you know that they strain forward crossing that line. They put all of their body out, their chest out, and they lean into it because they know that the race can be won or lost in a split second. So they're constantly looking forward. They're putting their whole body into it. Here's the question I want to ask you, and it's a very, very simple question. We're digging into a little bit more of this tomorrow. But what are you putting your whole body into? Are you putting your whole body into your spiritual development? I'm going to use that terminology. Are you putting your whole body into your spiritual development? Are you straining forward, not looking behind you? Remember, we even have a classic example that we've all heard in the Old Testament of Lot's wife. What did Lot's wife do? She looked back. She looked back and became a pillar of salt. We do not want to follow in that pattern. Instead, we want to increase our life, and we do that. We do that by looking forward. But, you know, it's easier to look backwards. It's easier to think about the good times or the bad times or or when we think times are better or we we think that, that a certain age was better than another age. When we do that, we run into a problem. And the problem is we are not straining forward. We are not putting our whole body into that. So I would ask you a simple question. What are you putting your whole body into? Paul says that everything that he had confidence in the flesh is now gone. So what's he put his body into? He puts his whole body. He puts his self. His all of his self. He puts all of that. Excuse me. He puts all of that into God. Because he knows. He knows that God is going to take care of him. He puts all of it into him. So what are you putting your whole self or your whole body into? Think about that today. Read through Philippians chapter 3. Spend some time in that verse that says, forgetting the things that are behind and straining forward to the things that are ahead. But I hope that you're having a great day. Check out our other studies that are available in the Preacher's Pen. It's the preacherspen.org. You can see our little column there with Bible classes. And by the way, If you haven't been to our website, you're going to notice some changes. I would encourage you to take a note of those. Go back and see see how we can help you out. Sign up for our contact list, our mailing list. Sign up for our podcast. And as always, we hope that you have a blessed day, and we'll talk to you soon.